welcome to another episode of Crow's Garage. Doing a update video on the Templar 250. I know the Camaro hasn't been around much. Um, I'm waiting to uh, get some axles bought and uh, a few other things before I do more work on that. But once I get the axles bought and that, I should be able to drag race it because I won't have to worry about breaking axles all the time. So maybe some drag racing content may be coming up soon, we'll see. But uh, yeah, we'll update on Tempor 250. So I took it back out for another ride yesterday out at Wheeler Pass. A um, few things that I had happened to it. Um, I had the chain fall off. Um, I got stuck up on a hill climb and the seat, the bolt for the seat came out. So the seat slid off, I fell off. Um, and then the chain popped off and I was trying to get it back up. And I almost had the bike roll over on top of me. Um, but it didn't, luckily. So. Uh, but yeah, nothing too crazy. The chain was just loose. I think a rock got kicked up into the chain and it popped it off, um, which got me stuck on a hill pass. So just, you know, you got to make sure this, tight, this chain's tight. I mean, it's even loose right now. Uh, I have another chain. I'm just going to go ahead and replace it. Um, I'm tired of dealing with this chain. I'll keep it as a backup spare in case I break the other one out on the trail. Um, but yeah. So also, I also have issues with, oh, I broke my, well, didn't break, but bent the hell out of my clutch lever on that drop too. So I'll either have to bend that back with some heat or uh, uh, I've got a new email, or I've got an email in with uh, support over at XPro to see if I can buy a new one. They said they would be able to send me parts and stuff if I needed them to be replaced. So hopefully they can send me something. Um, I also had issues with the electrical wiring in the back. Um, I jumped the bike and it bottomed out the rear shock. It wasn't even that big of a jump. Maybe I maybe caught like two, three foot of air, not anything too crazy. When I landed, I bottomed out the shock. So I need to put more preload in it, but I bottomed out the shock and it ripped the wiring off on the back. So I had to go ahead and reconnect all the stuff. I even electrical taped it up and then zip tied it up so it wouldn't come back down and get in the way of the tire. So yeah, go ahead and make sure you zip tie up your wiring. I don't, I think mine was zip tied up before maybe the zip ties broke. But uh, yeah, the uh, repair I did to the fender, that held up. So it's nice and sturdy. So that's all held up. Um, I do keep having uh, my 10 amp um, like ignition on fuse pop whenever I'm trying to start the bike when it's warmed up and I think it's because the starter gets heat soaked and then it tries to draw more current um, you know when the bike's warmed up so I mean I don't know if you'd want to even I don't know if you'd really want to replace that fuse with anything higher because I'm not sure if the wiring's handled uh, you know made for it or not I think it's probably 16 gauge or 18 gauge stranded um, I don't know what the amp limit is of that wire. You can look it up. Um, so, I'm, but I'm going to keep just, I'll put fuses in it. And when the bike's warmed up, I'll just kick start it. It usually starts up on the first kick after it's been warmed up anyway. So it's really not that big of a deal to me. I just like having a starter when it's cold. Cause sometimes it's, a, it's kind of a pain in the ass to kick start it when it's cold. It doesn't like to fire up. You can't get enough RPM long enough into the motor when it's cold for it to fire. So every once in a while when those fuse pops, I have to uh, kick the crap out of the bike when it's cold to, to get it to start. But it does eventually start up. Uh, all right, um, how'd the bike hold up? Well, we did some jumps and we did wheelers, wheeler pass. It's not, I wouldn't say like crazy rough terrain. It's rough in the sense of there's a lot of large rocks that put that, that make the suspension try to react very quickly to those uh, bumps. Uh, the front tires, get new ones. I don't recommend these tires that are on there. Um, will they work? Sure. I kept getting sucked into ruts and bouncing off rocks really terribly um, and getting put into bad spots. So I'd recommend getting new tires, um, new chain, new carb. I'm still on the stock carb. Now, if you're putting around in the middle of a gear, it's fine. It's probably fine. Um, but I did notice that if I'm doing highway speeds or trying to be up at the top end of a gear, it runs very lean up at the top. So definitely get a new carburetor, get a new chain, get some tires. Um, 
you know, I, I understand that this bike is meant for the cheap guy. If the if you're just riding this thing out on, you know, surface streets, you probably don't need to do any of this. It's probably fine. Although I'd still recommend changing the tires out to street tires. But um, I will, for my own modifications, I'm probably going to do different grips, different levers, because I doubt that I'll be able to get that clutch lever to bend back without snapping. So I'll be doing different levers, different grips, um, different tires, a new chain, which I already have. I'll be doing a Nibby 30 millimeter carb. Um, and that's pretty much all I'm going to do right now. I talked with my friends yesterday about this. We were both kind of all on the same boat of maybe this thing needs new suspension and new shocks just for dealing with what we deal with. Because we deal with a lot of a lot of the pat or a lot of the trails that we go to, at least so far, have been like mountain washes and stuff. Very rocky terrain. So the bike needs to be able to react very quickly and soak up those bumps. But I'll tell you, we were riding from like like 920, 930 till like 2.30 yesterday, five hours out on the trail. Uh, and I was, I was sore and beaten. Um, yeah, it was, it wasn't great. Um, I'm actually, this is the day after I'm, I'm really sore today. And I, I count that more for the trails that we're riding rather than, you know, the bike. I don't know. It, it could use new suspension, but the problem is, is trying to figure out where you could even find suspension that'll fit this. Um, so I'm, I'm digging, I'll, I'll put out an update video on that if I ever find anything. Um, let's see, what else? What else? Um, I mean, it's running now. Let's try to think of anything else. Oh, uh, there's no gas light on these. So go like 80 miles max on a tank of gas. Use your trip meter to tell you what that is. This has, I made the mistake yesterday, I thought this had a two gallon tank. It has like a 1.75 gallon tank. I made the mistake yesterday on my way home of thinking I had a two gallon tank and I ended up running out of fuel near the interstate. Luckily there was a gas station nearby. Um, so I was able to coast up to it, get gas and uh, you know, on, on I went. But yeah, don't, uh, there's no fuel light. Keep yourself on the trip meter mode and fill up when you hit 80 miles. It could probably stretch the fuel out to 100, but I, I just do 80. Um, and I'm looking into stuff to where I can hard mount like those rear tail tanks to where I can carry fuel on a rear tank back here or on the sides. Looking into those to see what I can do. Um, trying to mount stuff to this. I do know there's a guy that posted on the China, China Riders forums or Chinese Riders forums. It's like ChineseRiders.net or ChinaRider.net, something like that. But he has a windshield, he has a like a gel pad for the seat. The seat, not great. Either get a gel pad to strap on top of it or something. I gotta figure something out. Not a great seat. My I, I'm killed today because of that seat. Um and then he's also got um some different grips, levers and stuff. So I'm I'm gonna kinda go off of what he's doing. But yeah, I mean the bike still still runs good. Uh let's see how many miles I've got on the odometer. I have 420 miles. So technically speaking, I'm not even past part of the break-in period yet for this bike. I haven't been kind to it. I have done nothing but mile since mile one beat the shit out of this bike. Uh, you know, taking it on the highway, well not the highway, but you know, getting up in the speed way past what they recommend you doing in the first place. Um, it's all dusty. That's crazy, I even wash this bike. I need to soap this bike down. Um, but yeah, it, since mile one, it's been getting beaten. I've been putting, I haven't even been putting motorcycle oil on it. I know people say that's bad for the clutches. I've read another way that it's fine, but I've just been putting like mobile one 10 W 40 in the bike. It wasn't glittered when I checked it. I changed some oil every hundred miles so far. Um, and it's only a quart and a quarter, so it's not that much oil, but every time I've changed it, I've never had a, any sparkle or anything in the oil so it's been it's been fine uh cleaned out the filter cleaned off the magnetic plug there's not been anything crazy on there so the bike will take a beating uh i guess the real question is now at this point is how long it can take the beating uh i plan next time we're going to go riding i don't know if we're going to go riding next saturday when we're going to go but next time we go riding i'm going to take this thing on some more serious jumps and see how the suspension handles it um oh the bent wheel from last time uh, 
uh, they sent me a new one. Um, I emailed the XPro support uh, team on email and they just sent me a, uh, a new wheel. So I've got a new wheel sitting on the side. This one's bent, but I'm gonna keep riding it because the trails I ride on until it's, you know, past its time. So, but yeah, bike's holding up great. Uh, either I've showed you the video or I'm gonna cut to it now, but either way, that's this episode. Either enjoy the video montage or enjoy this outro. Please like and subscribe. If you wanna see more X-Pro content, that's probably what I'm gonna be doing more of uh, for the foreseeable future until I can get those axles over for the Camaro. But uh, yeah, like I said, for the fifth time, until next time, we'll see you guys later.